Okay, welcome to the second part of the Schubert seminar uh, with Alex Young uh, telling us about New World Lilo Richardson numbers. Okay, so in the first half, I reviewed the, uh, the grand history of the Lurson coefficients and the contributions uh, that came in that subject. Uh, I now, the preview of, of our results, uh, the summary is, and this is uh, with uh, Shilin Gao, Goodown Arowitz, Nicholas Serra, and myself, is that we give new little bit generalizations of the Kaliachko results and really conjectural version of the Knudsen Tau results for the classical groups. And this is in the uh, central dogma. What we're trying to say is that you have this red NL case that they interject between LR, which is the you know, uh, symmetric functions and the most general situation uh, uh, that's uh, you know, governed by the general test of multiplicities and things like Lowen path model that there's an interesting in between, which I think deserves uh, some independent investigation. Okay, so remind under what we mean by the classical groups. Um, let's start with SOM. These are, you fix some non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form. Remember, non-degenerate just means the matrix form has a non-zero determinant. And uh, we're looking at one uh, matrices which have this property, that they preserve the form, okay? And and when you ask for such matrices, the determinants are either one or minus one. And uh, by definition, we're making SOM the ones with determinant plus one. And similarly, you can define the symplectic group uh, only for even 2n, I mean, uh, except that instead of using uh, a symmetric bilinear form, you use a skew symmetric bilinear form. And there, the determinant is always uh, one. OK, uh, for the classical groups, the thing to understand is uh, that a lot of the representation theory looks uh, very much like the case of GLM. And this is emphasized in uh, Val's book, uh, The Classical Groups, from 1939. He says that for every one of these classical groups, he's going to give you a construction or an algorithm to give you representations for every partition with that most n rows, just like last time, just like in the, in the first half. And these are all irreducible except for one particular special case, which um, will be absolutely irrelevant to our conversation, as you shall see. Now, if you take a classical group, well, really, even more generally, uh, they're reductive. And so, so the tensor products of irreducibles decompose. And I'm going to call uh, the tensor product multiplicity T lambda mu nu, T for tensor. Okay. And one would like to understand these numbers. And in the very first slide, things like the Lumen path model and BZ triangles and crystal base, uh, crystal graphs are exactly a way to compute those sort of things, even more generally than for classical groups. Now, here comes uh, the definition. This definition demands absolutely nothing about representation theory. It is just a combinatorial definition. I'm given three partitions, lambda, mu, and nu. And I'm going to define numbers uh, n lambda mu nu, nu as a sum of product of, Lurchson, of LR coefficients. And uh, if you haven't seen this before, then I want to just point out one of the features. The you know you're summing over these indices alpha, beta, and gamma, and what you're doing is you go sort of a cyclic thing: alpha to beta, beta gamma, gamma back to alpha. Okay, so you're kind of you can if if you had any structure constants, you could always create things like this uh, and just define such a thing and study it. OK, and Kiyoki and Torada uh, prove the following things. Uh, well, let me go back. What is the relationship between T and N? First point is that they are not equal in general. They're absolutely not equal in general. However, what Kiyoki and Torada showed in 1987 is that they are equal under a hypothesis. And the hypothesis I put in the box here uh, is called the stable range. You assume the length of lambda, the number of rows of the Young diagram, plus the number of rows of mu is at most n, where n is the same thing in your, in your uh, definition of the classical group. An immediate corollary of this, which is rather uh, fantastic, is that therefore in the stable range, these numbers do not care which classical group you're working with, which is very odd because in general, these, these tensor product multiplicities definitely will care which classical group you're working with. 
right? They're all in fact equal to this new little bit number. And then one final thing, which doesn't come up in this talk, with, but which you may find interesting, is that Kyoki and Tirada also define a basis of symmetric functions that behave precisely like the Scher polynomials do. They are the universal characters for the situation, by which I mean, if you multiply two of their symmetric functions and expand in the basis of their symmetric functions, then you'll get exactly n lambda mu. Can I ask about the symmetry? Mm -hmm. um, maybe briefly, like at a glance, n looks like symmetric in lambda mu nu. It is. I'm used to thinking of there being a dual in T's somewhere, is, or am I mistaken? Uh, no, you're right. Uh, so in this particular case, they are totally symmetric. And the point is the dual is what? Like uh, dual just means negative of the partition, right? In this particular case. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. It ends up being symmetric. It's surprising. Oh, OK. And, and, and moreover, it's clear from the definition of symmetric. Right, right. For, for n, yeah. OK, Thanks. indeed. Are the okay. like Tirada basis elements sure positive? Are the, are the basis elements sure positive? If I, uh, oh, actually, let's see. Uh, wait, I'm forgetting. Are they alternating in sign? Um, I'm forgetting at the moment whether they're positive or alternating sign in a predictable way. But I believe the answer is basically yes. Shi Liang says no. Okay, well, I, I thought they were, were. Yeah, I just, we were kind of an example. I just simply forgot it. Um, yeah. Uh, well, actually, more to the point is that uh, these polynomials were, in fact, studied uh, some time ago by people like Krotenthaler, and they worked out all kinds of determinantal expressions. I mean, in Kyoki Torada, there's a Jacobi Trudy like determinant, and there was some contours worked out about these uh, quite some time ago. And, but we're not examining that in this particular talk. Okay, here's the definition of the new little numbers again. And uh, at this point, I'd like to make a shout out to uh, uh, Hik Young uh, Han who was a number theorist at Duke, uh, because uh, Gidon Chileng and I were originally stimulated by her paper, uh, which indeed considered these exact numbers. And she did so uh, in her paper, motivated by Langland's Beyond Endoscope proposal. In our first paper, uh, what we tried to do is think about all the, from first principles, what can you say about these numbers, just essentially knowing the definition. And I'm not going to review the results from that first paper here, but rather I'm just going to talk about a few facts uh, that give you a sense of the things that one would think about in the first hour of meeting this definition and may give you a sense of what we were uh, up to. Well, besides what Dave already noticed that they're symmetric, uh, another fact that's clear from the definition is that if you impose that size of mu equals size of lambda plus size of mu, then you can easily check that the L num NL numbers are equal to LR numbers. So therefore, this is in fact, not only an analog of the LR numbers, it's a straight up generalization. The second thing that you can prove using only the things I've told you in this talk is that these things are in fact, a semi-group. So if you have a triple lambda mu nu with a positive NL, you can sum over another triple and get a third triple. And then the third thing is something that was already appearing uh, in Han's uh, paper. Uh, it's this interesting parity condition. You can, a necessary condition for the NL number to be positive is that the sums of the sizes of the partitions is even. Okay, so from these facts, uh, let's again, in, by analogy with the LR case, define the semi-group. An L semigroup is just going to be triples for which the NL coefficient is positive. And uh, similarly, let's define a saturated NL semigroup, which is this defective form of the NL semigroup with this extra existence parameter condition. Uh, what we conjecture, uh, Xilin Gao, uh, Gidon Arelowitz, and I, is an analog of Kutz and Tao's uh, theorem. And the statement is the following. 
it's not true that the NL coefficients are saturated in, in any way that you normally think uh, that you would know to think about. But the only flaw is precisely the parity constraint. That is, the lattice points of this intersection, the, the, the convex hull even of these things, is exactly NL. And that's precisely the only fix you need to get a statement um, precisely analogous to Knudsen and Tau. Okay, um, now what about this uh, connection to eigencones or eigenvalues of, of matrices? The following result uh, together with Nicolas Rosser really is a corollary of our, of our theorems that I'll state later, but since I didn't tell you what the theorem is, I, it's kind of hard to call this a corollary yet. So let me just state it as a theorem. You have three partitions, lambda mu nu, you are an NL sat, if and only if there exists the matrices M1, M2, M3 of this weird form whose sum to zero and with and have eigenvalues essentially lambda mu nu, by which essentially I mean that rather than lambda mu nu, you take lambda hat, which is okay, as written. Okay. So that's that's the statement of um, the analog to uh, sums of Hermitian matrices in this context. Now, this is not a magically created uh, set of matrices from our perspective. Really, it's derived from the theorem of Bakali and Kumar. And in the context of their theorem, we're looking at the, well, the algebra of symplectic the algebra intersect, but really anti Hermitian matrices. But um, we set it up to be Hermitian matrices matrices here. And I'll say more about that later when we get to our main theorems. All right, what about the Horn and Kliatchko inequalities? Um, in the second paper that I wrote with uh, Gao and Relowitz, we conjectured a list of inequalities for uh, both NL and NL sat. Well, really NL, to be absolutely honest with you. Uh, we didn't really think about NL sat as a separate thing uh, at that point. And the general form of our inequalities has some similar flavor. Instead of, well, one less than equal to two, you have three less than equal to three, and you're summing over subsets of the eigenvalues, uh, but with a whole bunch of crazy uh, conditions on them. And it's the third condition here that I want to emphasize. It looks awful because you're summing over sums of products of six LR coefficient. What, what is that? However, I want you to notice the form of the summation. It's alpha one goes to alpha two, alpha two goes to beta one, beta one goes to beta two, beta two goes to gamma one, gamma one to gamma two, and gamma two back to alpha one. It's in fact exactly the same formulation as the NL coefficients themselves, only more of it. And therefore we call these multiple NL coefficients. So we're trying to talk about NL coefficients and what our inequalities are talking about are multiple NL coefficients. So it's not exactly a recursive, but it's suggestive, perhaps. And uh, to formulate our conjecture, uh, the statement that, well, let me state it this way, NL sat, uh, a triple is an NL sat if and only if they satisfy these particular inequalities. And this would be the analog of Kiliachko's uh, theorem. All right, now I want to talk about our main results. The first theorem is that the conjecture I just stated is in fact true. And that's with uh, Gao or Elowitz. Everything I'm about to state is with, with the four of us. And the proof is based on the following, let me call observation. That NL sat is equal to this tensor cone. What? This tensor cone is the following. I'm interested in arbitrary tensor work multiplicities without the hypothesis of stable range for the symplectic uh, group. That is to say, I'm interested in triples of partitions with this weird uh, quantifier such that this tensor product multiplicity is positive. If M is in Mary is extremely large compared to N is in Nancy, then this equality is trivial because Kiyoki and Tarada tell you that in the stable range, the NL and the tensor product multiplicities are 
same. What is interesting about this theorem, in my opinion, is that this equality is true for arbitrarily arbitrary m greater equal to n, even pre the stable range. Once you know that is true, and this is just to restate what I said, uh, then then we will get all our consequences. Okay, so how do we prove um, theorem B? Really, uh, let me talk about Belkali Kumar inequalities right now. Um, Belkali and Kumar think about these sorts of questions of knowing about tensor, the saturated tensor cones, things like, like this thing over here in general, without any constraint, um, complex, you know, um, for some, I guess, complex reductively groups. And, and what, what they do is they give an answer, a very beautiful answer in terms of Schubert calculus. They define a certain deformed cup product, and they say that something is an inequality if I satisfy a certain deformed Schubert calculus question. So there's where Schubert calculus comes up. And that's just a two second explanation of their, of their results. Um, I apologize to the experts. What Rosser is doing in a follow-up paper is he obtains the same results, but actually removes the cohomological description. He replaces it, at least in the classical groups, with just a condition on little Richardson coefficient, the little Richardson coefficients. Okay, so we're using those sorts of results as part of our arguments. Now, what Belkali and Kumar do is they, in fact, give minimal inequalities for these saturated tensor cones in general in absolute generality, and they also prove an eigencone description. Therefore, since we know that NL is equal, is in fact equal to the saturated tensor cone, we immediately get our eigencone description by just writing out what they mean in that particular case. And we get to choose the symplectic group because according to Kyoki and Tirada, it doesn't matter which group you choose among the classical groups. So we just choose one and go with it. And also, so we obtain the first minimal set of inequalities for NL sat. Corollary C depends on, on theorem B because even though you, you know that the NL coefficients are tensor product multiplicities in a stable range, when you impose the stable range condition, you may affect in principle what the minimal inequalities are in the Bekali Kumar theorem. And to go back to the Kaliachko Horn inequalities, we have to do some pretty heavy lifting in tableau combinatorics. Uh, and uh, I don't want to get into that, but it, it's uh, it's a connection RSK and something called demotion in one of our earlier papers. And this is to prove some particular non-vanishing result of the uh, non-vanishing result about these multiple NL numbers. Okay, another uh, corollary or theorem that comes from uh, this this analysis. Uh, we have a sort of factorization of the NL numbers on the boundary of NL sat. Boundary means that you assume that the inequalities are met with equality, and then you get um, that the NL number is equal to an LR number times some smaller NL number. Uh, I don't want to state the exact theorem because I would have to then state what the boundary is uh, precisely. But uh, for those in the know, this is an NL analog of certain factorization theorems of King, Tullu, and Timizay, and Dirksen, Bain, and possibly others. Uh, I, I think, Ed, you had uh, such a result exactly about this, and, and maybe with Sarah as well. OK, so uh, is that all there is to do? Well, no. In fact, where we are right now is we are exactly in the condition of Knudsen and Tau in the late 90s. Once we know theorem A, it now follows that the saturation conjecture that we had for NL would imply that the NL itself, not just NL sat, is described by these Horn and Kiliashko inequalities. But I don't know, we don't know yet how to prove what would seemingly be just a combinatorial question. Uh, what is some evidence for, um, uh, for the saturation conjecture? Well, I, we know for N equals two that the inequalities are correct for NL uh, from our first paper. And in our second paper, uh, this is with uh, Gao and Orelowitz. Uh, we know that it's true. Um, well, if you add an extra constraint that lambda mu nu is a row or a column. So we know it in those special cases. However, I think the strongest evidence for this comes from our most recent paper. It's that we prove computationally that NL saturation holds for all N less than five. 
This means that, so you're fixing the number of rows, but there's still infinitely many partitions lambda mu nu. And we're proving for all those infinitely many triples of partitions, the NL saturation is, is true. And uh, with that, I thank you. Thank you.